Hello everybody and welcome to this route description around the Mentif Hills. It's a 25 kilometer route. It's a mixture of blue, red, mud, double track, grade one aggregate and single track. Suits all kinds of riders from gravel bike up to gnarly mountain bike. Towards the end, I will be going down some of the infamous single track sections of the hills. You will also see later in the video some of the optional gnarly downhill tracks which the local mountain bike fraternity have made. Pretty good fun, even if you just go there for that, that would be a pretty good day out for you guys. Now we take in Route 7 of the Sustrans up and over Dukes Pass. We also take in a little bit of the Rob Roy Way. All in all, quite a mixture. I hope you are enjoying me in this video. Let's get started. Easily stuff up. The route starts off in Aberfoyle, and here we see the 25 km route and we go round anti-clockwise. Come back over Duke's Pass on return. Highlighted in green are the single track sessions. And if you so wish, here are marked in purple the downhill runs. Thoroughly good fun if you wish to do that. And last but not least, some points of interest and the mark of the Mente of Hills. Here we have the route profile. The first ascent you see here is from the car park up to the end of the first section of single track. The first descent is the second bit of single track down to Lock Warakar. We start our first ascent up to Lock Donkey, round Lock Donkey, up and over the Duke's Pass, then descend on the single track down into Aberfoyle. So we climb out of Aberfoyle up onto Route 7 and enter the park. Go and have a quick visit to the waterfall, quite impressive, we recommend that. Leave and then we go round the side of the hill as we see now and climb up and out up to the first bit of single track we see here in green. This section is quite nice in my opinion. It can get a little bit muddy. It's a little bit technical in places. Oh yeah, and someone left their helmet behind. How does someone lose a helmet? I have no idea. Anyway, continue on. Into a little bit of a forest. But this is where it starts getting a little bit of fun. Nothing too hard here though. We've got a few rock slabs you want to play around the nose. Don't mind, they are a bit slippery. And then we go out into the open and to some more single track. And again, quite technical, grassy, rooty, rod stones. Bit of fun here. And so this is the first section of single track out in the open. Past the cows, we weren't bothered at all. See if you can do that without dabbing. Up and round, a well-defined path up to the next gate. And this is effectively where we leave now the single track, join an aggregate path. It used to be single track in the past, but they've um, upgraded it. And as you can see here, we've got a lot of deforestation and it used to look something like this up till last year. Quite beautiful, but deforestation's changed it quite a lot. And there's also, they've done deforestation over on the other side of the road, so that means we can't nip off onto the left-hand side here, where the log stacks are, and go and continue on the roadway way. So we have to continue along the road, down, over the side here. You can see me looking. This is quite well defined. It seems to be used quite a lot. Again, good fun, a good descent. And then we turn left and make a hard descent, quite muddy, slippery, down to Lock Varicar. Here we join the path around the edge of Lock Varicar, a very beautiful path. Just tarmac and gravel, nothing technical here. A good photo opportunity. 
You do have to be careful here. There might be a few people walking or cycling the other direction, so you can't pilch it around here. And here we just had a spot of lunch. And then we ascend up to Lock Drunky. Levels out, go around Lock Drunky. The Forest Commission have laid on a few things for kids and stuff, but every time we visit here, we have a bit of a five second play, pull a few things to see what sound has come out. Someone's dead. <laughs> and then we continue on down the path. This is a beautiful area with all the autumn colours. Come to the end of Lock Drunky, and we start our ascent over the equivalent of what is Duke's Pass, and we start to climb. Then we traverse along the top of the hill, before descending down back into the main forest where the Queen Elizabeth Park Centre is. And now this is the great bit of fun. This is the first section of single track. if you can do this without dabbing. There's a few roots in there too. And as I said earlier, there's a lot of other roots like this dotted around this side of the hill. So if you manage to find them, I'm sure if you look on trail forks and then spend the day up there, you do have to climb your way up to turn the climb on the way down, but it's well worth it. Now we end that first section of single track, join the forest path again and head towards the Garoite Centre and head down the second bit of single track. Go past all of the new Garoite people and at one time all this wasn't here so this path was here before Garoite Centre was set up through the forest, down a few more steps. As you can see, it's quite well to find the path. And then have a steep descent back down to the river, which is extremely difficult with all the leaves on the ground. You just don't quite know what's hidden underneath the root. And then you join the path again and descend back into Aberfoyle and that's basically the ride. A good day out. It took us a few hours. We didn't really peg it around. And this is the bikes at the start and this is the bikes at the end. Quite a change in how they look. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you liked it even more, please subscribe. I will try and do some more videos like this again in the future. Keep well, keep safe and I'll catch up with you guys later.